right. So, for your homework, all right, what you're gonna have to do, they asked, they needed to find the vertical, the horizontal, um, the slant, if it's applicable, uh, the X and Y intercepts, and then they want us to just graph it, all right? So I'm gonna take you through all the points that we need to do to be able to graph. If you have a graphing calculator, it makes your life extremely easy. All right. However, you're still gonna have to show me the work and show me that math, math or algebraically that you can do everything. However, having a graphing calculator will at least confirm that your results are correct. Okay. Without a graphing calculator, what you're just gonna you have, have to go through the work. What if you don't have one? Though? Then just do what I do. Okay. Because I don't have a graphing calculator and I'm gonna get the problem right. Okay. So. First thing you want to do is I always like to start with the vertical asymptote. All right, remember the vertical asymptote is telling us our line where uh, uh, where uh, our bottom of our function is going to equal zero, right? It's the zeros of our function because remember vertical asymptote is not a part of our domain, so therefore I'm going to say zero equals x squared minus nine. So what values make my bottom zero? That's going to be my vertical asymptote, meaning. My graph is not going to ever be a part of my vertical asymptote. It's going to approach it, but it's never going to touch or cross it. So what I'll do is I'll add 9 to both sides. I get x squared. Actually, you know what? Let me do this. Mom, three. three. Okay. One thing, you guys could solve it, right? You could say you could add the 9 to both sides. I'll do it this way. So 9 equals x squared. Then you take the square root. x equals plus or minus 3. Right? You can do it that way. Yes. That's not a wrong way. I would like you guys also to notice, though, this is a difference of two squares. So you could also just write x plus 3 times x minus 3 equals 0. Right? You guys should notice that your first number is a square number, your second number is a square number, therefore it's a difference of two squares. You guys got to look for difference of two squares. And the reason why I want you to see that is because here's what the problem is. This is a binomial, meaning it has two terms. This is the most common mistake that I've been seeing from you guys. Everybody, when you have three terms, ladies and gentlemen, you can't add the nine over here and start doing some crazy stuff. This is like the most mistake I get. And everybody's like, uh, I don't know what to do from here. Well, of course you don't know what to do from there, all right? Because I don't know what you're doing, trying to do from there you know, really either. Whenever you have a trinomial, ladies and gentlemen, our only ways of solving are that we've talked about are factoring, completing the square, and quadratic formula. So if you have a trinomial like this, don't try solving it. That's only when you have a binomial can you do that. All right? This trinomial, you guys are going to have to factor this one. Okay? I don't know if that was factorable. It doesn't look like it. But I just wanted you guys to see that real quick. So my vertical asymptote is x equals 3 and negative 3. Next one is horizontal. On a horizontal asymptote, we need to look and see the degrees. So when you're dealing with horizontal asymptotes, you look at the degrees of your leading terms. When the two degrees are equal to each other, you take the coefficients of your two terms. So I take the coefficient, which would be 1 over 1. Do not do 2 over 2, because it's always going to be 1. This case, though, it ends up back in the coefficients are exactly the same. So my horizontal asymptote, y equals my top coefficient, 1, divided by my bottom coefficient, which ends up equaling 1. Okay? And let's see here. Um, then we need to find the x and y intercepts. X-intercept. The x-intercept, guys, is where the graph crosses the x-axis, meaning y equals 0. So I'm going to take my function, and remember y is the same thing as f of x. So 0 is the same thing in my output. So 0 equals x squared over x squared minus 9. All right? Now to go back to algebra 1, a lot of you guys are going to have the same problem, because a lot of my algebra 1 students have it. And they, they have such a hard time understanding, how do I get rid of this 4? Remember, guys, when you get rid of a fraction, you multiply by the fraction, right? So my algebra 1 kids have a tough time. They hate it. But you multiply by 4 on both sides. So you get x equals 12, right? Because those will end up canceling out. Here, it's the exact same thing, except you guys are in pre-calc. So we've got to deal with a little bit harder work. But you just multiply by what's on the bottom. 
And when you do this enough times, hence meaning you did your homework, what you'll notice is the same pattern keeps on occurring. You're really just setting the top equal to zero because what happens? That cancels out and that goes to zero. So when you do your homework, you get a pattern. You notice, hey, I can really just set the top equal to zero, you know, and that's really what's happening. So therefore, my x-intercept is x <coughs> equals zero. All right? Now we need to find the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is when x equals zero. All right? So now I just need to plug in zero in for x. Okay, well, you're going to have zero up top. Zero divided by anything is always going to equal zero. It always seems that all of the intercepts always equal zero. It's very common very often that they will. But that's just, you know, it just all depends on what problems you've been doing. But yes, it's very common. Okay. But you see how I got this so far? Yeah, I get it. It's always the same thing. It, but it's not always, it though, not at all. What well, doesn't make any sense? Like, zero. why everything is always zero? If it's always zero, it's why can't I just put zero? The only reason why is, right. if I had, if this function was plus one, <laughs> I'm not crazy. It wouldn't be like that, OK? Or, I mean, it just depends. Like, Because if you're plugging in zero, you know, zero, whatever, if you had like a number up there, the reason why, because a lot of problems in the book only have a numerator as your variable. So when you plug in zero, you're gonna always be dividing by zero. Or you're gonna, I mean, you're gonna have zero up top, so your answer will be zero. So not a lot of them have binomials. They, a lot of them just have a singular um, term up there. That's just your variable. So that's why a lot of the problems that we assigned just had a variable up there, so it became zero. Yeah. But if it's a binomial or a trinomial, you know, there's, you're not gonna always have zeros. So, but is everybody cool with this? We did all the tough hard work, right? So let me just rewrite it because I'm going to erase this. So my vertical x equals vertical x equals plus or minus three. Oh. Horizontal y equals zero. X and y x comma y, y is zero comma zero, right? Y equals one. I thought y was one. You said horizontal. Oh, yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Y equals one, right? So you guys can look at this later and like study it. So I'll erase it. Okay, now we need to graph it. So in graphing it, okay, because this is what you guys are going to do in a test. Graphing it, you just graph your asymptotes. X and plus or minus 3, so I go over 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I go over 3. And remember, it's a vertical asymptote, meaning my graph is not defined for any of these x values. So I'm going to draw a dotted line saying my graph is never going to, um, for a function, for vertical asymptotes, it's never going to be on a vertical asymptote. Because if it was, it would be undefined at that value. So it's undefined for vertical asymptotes. Um, the other thing you remember is my graph is always going to be approaching these asymptotes. Then I go over to negative 3, and I do the same thing. Now, horizontal asymptotes are a little bit different. You Sometimes you will encounter a graph that will cross a horizontal asymptote. So that's perfectly fine because that's allowed. Um, but for vertical, it's not allowed because remember vertical, if it crosses an asymptote, that means it makes the bottom zero, right? Yeah. So we can't have it for that. Um, so then I go up here to one. Okay, so what we have is my graph, I have no idea what it's gonna look like, but my graph is gonna be approaching these asymptotes. That's all I know. So if you have a graph calculator, awesome. If you don't, let's show you how to do it. What I like to do is I always like to pick at least two points right and left of every asymptote. All right, so let's pick a random point. Let's pick one, two, three. Let's pick f of negative four. Okay, um, let's do, I'll just show you a little bit more. f of negative four. And let's pick f of negative one. Let's pick f of 4, and let's pick f of 1. So for time purposes, I'll usually show more work and examples, but if you have graph for the minimum, um, if you have a graphic calculator, you can just show me. I'll just take you know four points, at least one on the left and right in each one. Um, so f of 4, 
Remember, this is like your first chapter you guys did. You just plug in negative 4 into your function, right? So you get negative 4 squared over negative 4 squared minus 9, right? And I believe you get 16 over 7, yeah. right? When I plug in f of negative 1 without having to show all that work, I get uh, 1, uh, 1, 8. Negative. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah, here, I'm going to get the same thing, 16 over 7. And here I'll get negative 1 eighth again. Okay, because it's squared, so it's not going to matter. Now, if I didn't have a graphing calculator, I would probably do f of 5, right? But I know what the graph looks like, so I'm not going to do it. Um, and actually, you don't even need to know what the graph looks like. Because you guys need to know one important thing. 16 divided by 7 is like 2 and... Um, you have, it's so like what? 2.29. Okay, so 2.29, it's like right up here. All right? If you pick five, you're going to know it's something here, but what you guys will see is, what I want you guys to understand, um, negative one, something like this. And oh, there's my x-intercept too. All right, so therefore I've plotted some points. One thing you guys remember, remember asymptotes. What are asymptotes? Remember asymptotes are as our graph approaches them, they, I'm sorry, as our graph approaches, you know, either infinity or negativity, it, approach, it approaches the asymptotes. So you can look at this point. Usually you like to pick two points to connect. But what happens is, so as this point, as my graph's going far this way, it's going to approach this asymptote. And as my graph goes this way, it's going to approach this asymptote. Does that make sense? Remember, asymptotes are what your graph approaches. Here, the same thing's happening. It's going to approach this asymptote and approaches this asymptote. Well here, if I connect these two points, all right, I need to approach these two different asymptotes. So it's gonna approach here, and it's gonna approach there, all right? Like I said, guys, there's two different ways to do this. If you don't have a graphing calculator, you'd probably be best doing f of five, just to double check your work, all right? Just to make sure that, or f of negative five and f of five, and here, I would probably also double check f of negative 2 and positive 2, just to make sure your graph is doing what you want to. But if you have a graphing calculator, you can just find those values and put them in the table values for me and show me. Yes? Um, like, can we just use the table function and, like, constantly If you can show me what the points are that you have, yeah. that will be sufficient. Okay? Does anybody have any questions on how to graph this? I don't think From what I did on the board, do you have any questions? Uh, no. Do we just do the table? You can show me on the table. 